Fort Whitley was built in the mid 19th century as part of a defence plan by Prime Minister Lord Henry Palmerston against a fear that the French would invade southern England. We've been to Fort Whitley many, many, many times. We've never done an episode from here. So uh, we've got Mandy, Al and Kerry from the team here. Um, I'm going to go down in the tunnels. I have to admit, now everyone knows what a sceptic I am. This is one of the few places that actually does spook me out a little bit. It's probably, yeah, it's more psychological than anything else, but I'm very interested in getting down into the tunnels and see what's going on. Of course, most people will know Cheen from the 1950s and 60s BBC comedy show, Hancock's Half Hour with comedian Tony Hancock living in the fictional house of 23 Railway Cuttings, a road in East Cheam. Now, people like to think that East Cheam never existed, just like Railway Cuttings, but an 1841 census actually does list East Cheam as a real place, so not as fictional as you're meant to believe. We returned to Bolbrook Castle. We were here six months ago uh, on a very cold January Saturday night. July now, so it's much warmer, really pleasant. Um, it's nice actually to come here and actually see it from the outside in the daytime. So we've already made sort of the groundwork last time we were here, so we'll see if we can sort of rally up and see if we can get in touch with anyone that Alan picked up uh, before. So it uh, should be very interesting. We've got Annalisa here and Al again. Um, so yeah, welcome to Bulbrook Castle. All Saints Church is a Grade 2 listed building and a place of worship has stood on this site from before Norman times. The church has been much altered over the years since the 12th century onwards, with the tower being the oldest part of the building. In the main lounge area, we conduct a communication circle. Okay, we've moved down into the main hall area, uh, Wimmer and what we're going to try and do is got a table set up and try and do some uh, table work, see if we can contact any spirits around. Usually in this area it can be quite strong. So far tonight, uh, not much is coming out to play. That's just fine, you know. If we get nothing, we show nothing. That's our philosophy. So we'll see how it goes, see if we build up the energy, and um, hopefully they might pop in and say hi. Like many of our ancient towns, Cheam appears in the Doomsday Book of 1086, and at that time was held by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and was rented at £14. By the Middle Ages, Cheam had become well known for its potteries and breweries. Breweries, in fact, actually flourished here from 1200 onwards, with the last one only to close in 1910 on Morgan Road. But he did like coming up to Box Hill quite a lot for lone walks and meditations. Uh, in one of his walks, uh, he tripped and fell on a spike, which unfortunately gouged his eye out. Uh, and we think from the result of that accident, he actually did die uh, and was buried here on the 11th of July, 1800. Cheam was bought by Henry Fitzalan, 12th Earl of Arundel, who passed his estate on to his son, John, Lord Lumley. It wasn't until the 1580s that Lord Lumley who was an ancestor of the actress Jane Alumley, converted the chapel into a private memorial for his two wives, Jane and Elizabeth, and his children, who unfortunately died in infancy. Part of an ambitious landscaping project of the park, the grotto was built in 1724, and was part of a canal that stretched down to Carshorton Place, although it's now dry. However, that spell of wet weather we had in the winter of 2014 once again allowed water to flow through the park. 